Hey guys, coming back to you for part two on the first chapter of Passion from the book Fervent. Yes, I have on the same shirt because I'm doing a second video in a row. So when I left off in the last one, we had talked a lot about what it means to have passion for God and how God wants us to be passionate. And I had just read to you Colossians 3.23 that says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord and not to men. And that's the most important thing, is for us to exhibit our passion for God, to do those things that are not always seen among men, but to be seen and honored by God. That's what matters. Now, let's talk about passion in 2016. Here's the amazing thing that's going on. And I'm going to say in America, but I'm going to also say all over the world right now, because we have a lot of um, have international viewers on this also. So please excuse me for him to turn things off on my phone. But here's the thing that's going on in 2016 that I think that if you're a Christian, and you, you will agree with me here. It's okay to be passionate about everything in this world except God. People get offended when we talk about our passion for God. It's not politically correct. I'm so tired of that term, <laughs> to be passionate about God. We can be passionate about movies. Oh, and the awards, they roll out the red carpet for the movie stars. They can be passionate about them. We can be passionate about sports, as I just told you. Alabama, it's almost like a religion here. We can be passionate about politics. Oh, we won't even get into politics right now. We can be passionate about clothes and fashion. They have all these huge fashion shows. We can be passionate about restaurants. Now, I can get passionate about some restaurants <laughs> and eating. But we cannot be passionate about God. When we come out and we want to express what our view is, then we're called judgmental. That doesn't make any sense. If you're passionate about one thing and you don't agree with each other, you can still be passionate about what you're passionate about. Just because you don't agree doesn't mean that you can't still have passion. There's so many things that have come out against biblical stances, and, and the thing about it is I believe that everybody has a voice, but it doesn't mean that I have to agree with them in order, just because I'm a Christian, it doesn't mean that I have to accept what they're saying. You know, it's like the, the just different things that have come out, people don't want just our acceptance, they want our approval. And, and that's just not the way it is in life. We're not going to approve and agree with everybody on anything. So don't try to push it. You know, even with what I believe in the Lord, the reason I'm sharing with y'all is to share my viewpoint and how I interpret what the, God, the Word of God says. But in the same sense, if you don't believe that way, I don't want to appear to be shoving it down your throat. I want to be teaching it in love and concern, and I want to be teaching it to you so that I can share my viewpoints. But you know what? If I offend or you disagree with me, you don't have to watch me. But it still doesn't mean that I can't share what my passion is. So be our passion about God, sometimes people don't, don't want it, you know? But I typed in to Amazon, and just like I was looking for a book, and I put a passion for, and this is what came up. I, well, there was a couple of hundred titles actually came up, but some of them that were kind of different and unique. A passion for birds, a passion for books, a passion for cactus, a passion for chocolate. That's pretty understandable. A passion for fashion, a passion for fishing, a passion for flying, a passion for gardening, for golf, for hunting. There's even a book called A Passion for Mushrooms. <laughs> A passion for needlepoint, a passion for pasta, a passion for ponies. There's even a book called A Passion for Potatoes, for Roses, for Shoes. There's even a book called A Passion for Steam. I can't figure out what that one's about, but hey, if you get passionate about steam, so be it. But do you see that when you go into Amazon, that there's 
People can be passionate about all kind of stuff. How much more should we be passionate about the God, our Creator, who designed us, who created us, who put life into us? Well, let me tell you about prayer. Fervent prayer is fueled by passion, by faith, by fire. Anybody can pray just a now I lay me down to sleep prayer, but passionate, fervent prayer is what's going to change your life, your family, your children, your mate, your church, your world. That's what's going to change. Passion is what pushes the athlete to run one more lap, to crunch through one more set of reps in preparing for it. It's what silences those screaming thigh and stomach muscles, making them do what their owner demands of them to do. No matter how loudly they complain, passion is what pushes that person to prepare his body to do the job that he wants to do. Passion is what keeps a piano player anchored to that piano stool, to that piano bench, when no one else is around to notice or to even watch or to give them a pat on the back for approval. It is passion to learn in that piece of music perfectly. Passion is what inspires the young, eager employees to outperform expectations. Instead of just punching the clock, just getting there and doing only the minimum, passion is what pushes them and what creates in them a work ethic that makes them strong, that other people will see and believe in them and move them up the career ladder. Passion is what burns up the road between a child in danger and a parent in pursuit. It glows red hot. That is passion. Be fearless in the passion. Let me say that over. Be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. What sets your soul on fire? Are you passionate about God? That's why if I were your enemy, I love these when she does this. If I were your enemy, I'd make stealing your passion one of my primary goals. If he can steal our passion, he can steal so much away from us. Our hunger, our desire, our want to, he can steal all of that away. Because I know if I could dim your passion, I could make you walk with a spiritual limp and lengthen how long it takes for you to recover from the injury. I hate the devil. I hate you, devil. Because, yeah, he is always trying to give us a spiritual limp. But I know the great physician. I know the one who walked on the water to the boat to the disciples. I don't know anybody else. Peter stepped out, but he sunk because he was distracted. But our God is capable of everything. If I were your enemy and I could chip away at your zeal, at your hope, at your belief in God and what he can do for you, I could chisel your faith down to a whimper, make you want to quit and never try again. I guarantee you that the majority of you that are listening to this today have been at a point in your life, some of you may be there now, to where your faith has been chiseled down to just a small whimper that when you call out to God, you feel like he is a million miles away because of the attacks of Satan. And see, so many times we, because we don't know how to do differently, we don't know, and this is what we're learning through this, how to call on the word of God. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to do it effectively, strategically. We allow those attacks to continue. I've been there, done that, got t-shirts to prove it. I know what that means. I'm not quitting. I've come too far to turn back. I've got my eye set on the prize. The prize is not in this world. It doesn't take very long to figure out that this world, what it gives, is very minimum satisfaction. What Jesus gives is peace and contentment and joy. And all of that is permanent. That's going to take us all the way through. You ever lost your passion? Have you ever thought that you lost your passion as part of a, a satanic sabotage? A strategy against you on purpose. It happens every day. 
And if you've never thought about that, it's time to think about it now. In our culture, it's okay to be passionate about anything except your religion, your faith, and your relationship with God. I don't understand that. Yeah, I do understand it. That is satanic sabotage against the people of this world. You can go to a rock concert or a political rally or a baseball game and shout your head off. Get excited. You can get just radical and football games. You can paint your body with big letters and nobody thinks a thing about it. They're like, man, they're a great sport. But you go out somewhere and you paint your body and you have Jesus Christ painted on there, then you'll be a fanatic. Isn't that odd? Isn't that odd? Nobody thinks that's a big deal. They'll say, ooh, he's a big fan. He's the biggest fan of all. But if you stand up in church and say, praise the Lord for what he's done in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I give you glory and honor and praise. Some people will look at you and say, well, she's out of order. He's out of order. What's wrong with them? They're interrupting the service. What's the difference? I'm a fan of the Crimson Tide of Alabama, but I'm a bigger fan of Jesus Christ. He's my number one thing to get excited about. And I am an excited worshiper. I, I love, But I go to a church that approves of that and honors that, and we have the freedom to worship. If you go to a church and you want to praise the Lord and you don't feel like you can, you need to find you another church. I'm so excited that some of you have started to church because we've talked about it a lot on here. I got a message today from a young lady that told me after watching my videos and hearing me talk about the importance of church that she went this past Sunday, took a friend with her that had never been to church before, and they were joining a small group, and that she had ordered her a, a, a study Bible. I'm like, I was crying. I was crying. I had to send that message to my closest friends and say, look what God is doing. See, that's the thing about being passionate. It is contagious. When you are excited about something, other people around you will get excited also. Romans 12, 1 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. I've seen people in church before that looked like they didn't even know who Jesus was, that the Lord had never done anything for. I didn't see any zeal. I didn't see spiritual fervor. Now, now I'm not talking about shouting, because everybody doesn't shout. Everybody doesn't worship the same way. I'm not saying that. But you know, when the preacher's up preaching, the choir's up singing, and you're singing praise and worship, there should be something identifiable on your face that you love the Lord. If you're sitting there like, Is it time to go home yet? Hello? I bet you is that if it was a big ball game, you'd be, you wouldn't even know what time it is. That's what the Bible's talking about. Don't be lacking in zeal and spiritual fervor for your Lord. You should be his greatest fan. Keep the fires going in your life. And there again, I'm not talking about how you worship. I'm talking about that you do worship in your own way. That it is evident on your face, in your speech, in your walk, in your attitude, that you are a fan, that you serve the Lord, that you're passionate, that once you were lost, but now you're found. Once you were blind, but now you can see. If that is not exhibited through your life, to your co-workers, to your family, you don't have any passion. Think about that. If you're around a group and they're using profanity and you're using profanity, that, mm -mm, that's, that's what you're passionate about. You know, if you're around a group and they know you love sports and they don't know that you love the Lord, something's wrong. Your passion is in the wrong place. If you're around a group of people and you're, all you talk about is your concerts that you go to, nothing wrong with going to concerts. But if that's all people know you by and they don't know you at all, that you love the Lord, your passion is in the wrong place. And that's exactly where the enemy wants it to be. People should know. I tell rank strangers 
about how good God is. I will. I mean, it's in my conversation sometimes. Not that I'm perfect, because I'm not. But I, it's constantly in my mind. I'm trying to keep the fire of God in my life at all time. It's a choice. It's a discipline. It's something that we have to maintain. I have to pray. I have to stay in the Word of God. I have to work hard. I'm just like you. I get mad too. I get mad at people, and I'd love to tell them what I think of them, but I can't because the Holy Spirit checks off in you, in 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 my heart, in my mind. Really, you want to claim to be a Bible teacher, and then you want to act that way. You want to claim to be a child of God and act that way. So, we're not by nature passionate about God. Okay, we're born into a world of sin. So we're not by nature passionate. We have to work on being passionate about something, about God. It's something that we choose to do. We can get distracted so easily. Guys, I worked 38 years. I know how hard it is to work full time. But I also know that you carve out that time for God. And then he will turn in turn bless your work. It's happened in my life. There will be things in life that the enemy will actually use to conspire against us to keep us from being passionate about our Lord. So in order to keep your passion going, you've got to keep the fire going. You've got to keep the word in you. It's a discipline. It is not automatic. It's not from the day you get saved, you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you can say, okay, good, I can quit now. No, 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 no. It is just the beginning of a long journey. It is just the beginning of a long discipline. It's just like we were talking about that athlete, the Olympics. It amazes me. The years and years and years they train and they learn to go compete in the Olympics. That is passion. It's the same way that we have to be about the Lord. It's an everyday experience. Are we perfect every day? Heck no. Are there days we don't pray? Yeah. Are there days we don't read our Bible? Yeah. But the thing is, we feel guilty about it when we're passionate about Him. We're not so much, not so much always guilty, but we have a desire to get back to the Word of God, discipline ourselves. Being passionate about God, too, has nothing to do with your age, your socioeconomic background, or your personality. It is an individual thing. Churches have senior people that have been walking with the Lord for years and years and years. And oh, they have sweet stories to tell about where the Lord has brought them from. I feel like I'm already there because he's brought me through so much junk in my life. And then you see new Christians, teenagers, and children that are just learning about God and learning how to be in love with him. And they're fresh. Our children, our pastor called our children down to the altar Sunday. They're usually downstairs, but they come up a lot. And he called them down and he prayed over the little children. And they were raising their hands in worship. And I'm going to tell you, there was one little guy in particular. And I'm going to put his picture in here. I'm going to, someone, got, someone made a picture of it. And he is standing with his hands raised against his earthly father. He's leaning against him while he's praising his heavenly father. Woo! I turned around and I said, I'm telling y'all, I'm about to leave here. That's the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen. But he's about 10, I guess, 9 or 10. And it was just pure, raw, innocent worship. He didn't have all the junk already in him that a lot of us have experienced. And he was just being passionate about worshiping his Lord. So it has nothing to do with your age, your personality. And just know that there are going to be so many things in life that conspire against you not to be passionate about God. Distractions on every hand. The lesson I taught last week to the Bible study group was how to get away from distractions and to praise the Lord and to worship Him and to walk with Him. And I'm going to teach that lesson uh, later on. So things are going to worse. When you first become a believer and you, you really understand what a good deal 
you've got. You get excited about it. I love being around a new Christian because they are excited. They don't take for granted the things that some of us that have been walking with the Lord for a long time, they don't take it for granted. It's just like when you first learn how to swim, I hear... <laughs> I'll learn how to do that. That you want to swim all the time. You know that when you first got those training wheels off of your bicycle and you could ride that bike all over the yard, you felt like you were a big, hot dude. You thought you were the stuff. You were excited. You were passionate about riding that bicycle. <coughs> and that's the way new Christians are. They know that all their sins are forgiven. They now have a purpose for living. They have a future home in heaven. They've realized that they have a great deal. They're excited about giving their life to Christ. They're excited about what he's going to do for them. But as time goes by, it is common in any walk of our life to lose steam. And you begin to lose your zip and your zest. How many of us start out January the 1st on a diet? To find out come June, that diet is long gone. Well, it's April for me. I'm not done good the last few weeks, but I'm still going. You hear me? <laughs> but it's so easy for us to lose steam. How many of us start a, um, a craft or a hobby only just for a few months later to say, what? I don't even remember doing that. It's a normal thing that happens, and that's the reason we have to work. That's the reason... When I pick back up in the next lesson, we're going to talk about things that are passion killers. We're going to talk about things that will rob the joy out of your life. Passion killers are what keeps you from having that constant passion for the Lord. So this is a good place to stop, and we'll pick up on part three when I come back. But ask him this very day, night, hour, minute that you watch this. When you get through watching it, you need to turn it off and say, Father, I want a desire to be passionate about you. I'm passionate about this, this, and this in my life. Some of you are passionate about keeping your house spotless, but you never sit down and pick up the Word of God. Some of you are passionate about your career, and those things are okay. God created you that way to make you, but he says, please, please, please let me in. And I'm going to tell you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are gentlemen. They will never, never, never press their self in on you if you don't want them. But how it must break God's heart when we can go days, weeks, months, and years without acknowledging that he's our Father and to tell him how much we love him. Father, I want to be passionate about you. I want these people to be passionate about you. I ask you to touch lives that have watched this today to just let them start a process of seeking your passion, taking baby steps, knowing that great passion comes from walking with you daily and that when we mess up, that you were there faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. I pray for passion about you, about your word, about your church, about prayer to be instilled in those who have just watched this video. In your precious son's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm so excited. I am passionate about teaching y'all these lessons. And listen, I realize at the rate we're going, it's going to take a while, but that's okay. Because we're going to keep walking and keep walking. I just want to remind you that he came, that you could have life and have it more abundantly. Until our next lesson, I love you guys. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And get your passion going. Love y'all. Bye. Hey guys, coming back to you for part, mm, quit whopping your head that way, quit pushing your hair back, do better, do better. Habits, habits are hard to break when you're videoing. Okay. Hey guys, coming back to you for part two on the first chapter of Passion from the book Fervent.